Um, okay, so I want to show how to do a bar or column uh, graph, and um, with with a a standard deviation error bar. Okay, because <laughs> um, I feel like if you just have a bar, you just have bars, and you guys are in grad school, and you really want to take it to the next level. Just like I said on the first thing, like first day about. Let's not just show means and medians. Let's show measures of dispersion, measures of variation. I think the same is true with your graphs. You don't want to just show a bar graph that the bars are just showing an average. You want to show variation. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Um, so here, we'll just create a simple bar graph using this data. I always take it out of the pivot table. So I'm going to copy it. and. I think I'm just gonna, I usually do paste special and values only because sometimes it brings formulas with it um, that I don't necessarily want. Oops. So I'm gonna just bring this down to two, to just two decimal places. Um, so this is, and I wanna remember what, what my, is. So I'll put that there. And I think that's all I need right now. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to highlight that and go to insert chart. Okay, Google. <laughs> so Google thinks I want to scatter plot, but I don't. So you just click chart type and Here's a column chart, so we can go like there. So now we actually, we're getting there. Um, I've mentioned I don't like chart titles in the chart. I think it's better when you use the caption. So personally, I'm just gonna delete that chart title that was embedded in the, um, in the figure. Um, so now this is just showing that low-income countries are, have less CO2 emissions and so forth, but we don't have those error bars. Um, if you go down here to series, I got really excited when I first saw error bars and I was just like, sweet, okay, put it in. And they even have, so first they do it by percent and they, <laughs> This is just 10% of high and 10% of medium and 10%. I don't know anyone that would ever just use that as a measure. So I think it's interesting that they have that as a, maybe it's an economics and sales and businessy thing. I, I don't know. Um, but I don't want it to be percent. I want standard deviation. And the problem here is that when you choose standard deviation, it's, it's giving me this nonsensical data um, that is based on what I've given it and it doesn't understand what the actual standard deviation is. Um, so we gotta do something else um, with this. Um, so sometimes Let me see if I can find this where it is. Okay, so, all right, so I, I moved from customize, trying to remember where this was. I moved from customize to setup. And under setup, there's, at the bottom, there's this unclicked box called switch rows and columns. And I'm gonna just click that. Um, and look at what it does. It, change the color, uh, give me different colors for each. And essentially what, what clicking that box, and I'm not quite sure why this, why this works, right? But um, what it does is it moves Google Sheets from thinking this is all one group of data to three separate types of data. And that's actually good. That's what we need um, to make this work right. So I've clicked that box under setup. Um, which is switch rows and columns that made it look, and, and this, is, this is looking better to me already. 
Then I go back to customize and I go back to series. And I have this option apply to all series or I can do apply to just one group now because it's treating each of these as a separate thing. So I can do apply to low and go down and do instead of standard deviation, which is giving me nonsensical data, I'm going to choose constant. And I am going to choose the value and put it in there based on what I know is the standard deviation. So um, what is the standard deviation for low? I have to go back out here. Here's the average. Let me go to my pivot table. I'm going to change that standard deviation. So for low, the standard deviation is 1.04. Um, so what I want to do is get back into the chart. Let me double click it. Okay, there I'm back in the chart editor, out of the pivot table, and go to customize, series, error bars. And this is where it's good to have the video of this. <laughs> so, um, and I'll do constant. Whoops, and I knew I messed up something. Apply to low. Okay, here we go. Apply to low, constant. Let's see if this works. 1.04. Oops. Okay, it got smaller. Yay. That little up down thing, this thing is uh, plus or minus one standard deviation. So it's one, plus or minus one, just for the low um, data set. So now we got to do it for the other data uh, groups. So we would go to medium, error bars, constant, uh, here we see that it's 4.67 is the standard deviation. And you can see that the graph is already it automatically adjusted. Now we go to high and we're going to put in 9.27. So it's almost 10, so it should look pretty close to what we have there. And by the way, you don't need to hit enter or anything, you just it in and it changes. All right, so now we have um, means, which is the bar height, with plus or minus one standard deviation as the error bars that is unique to each of the three groups of countries. Um, one thing I don't like is this title down here, which is not. <laughs> accurate and it's not letting me delete it because it's pulling it from this cell over here. So if I just delete that cell, okay, that looks good. Now you might have some other things you would want to do here, like you might decide to get rid of um, the, these horizontal lines. Um, you might get rid of some of this space there's a lot of things you can do formatting, but the main thing I want to show you all is how to put in the error bars. Um, cool, okay. Go back here. I think I have, there it is. That's sort of earlier I worked this out. And um, so there would be your, your figure and you would put your figure caption below it and explain wh where the data came from and so forth. And that it's, and you would explain that the bars are showing plus or minus one standard deviation. Um, so now a, a, a viewer can realize, oh, well, not only does, does the, the amount of CO2 released increase per person in wealthier countries, but the very, there's a lot more variation. Not necessarily as a percentage of the mean, but there's more variation total. So there are some countries that are very wealthy that have a low a relatively low CO2 output. So that, that just adds to the plot of the story, if you will.